Each property can collect data independently of each other using a unique tracking ID that appears in your tracking code. You can use a feature called filters in your configuration settings to determine what data you want to include in the reports for each view. The Google Store sells merchandise from their website across different geographical regions. They could create one view that includes all of their global website data. But if they wanted to see data for individual regions, they could create separate views for North America, Europe, and Asia. If the Google Store wanted to only see data for external traffic that didn't include their own store employees, they could set up a view that filtered out internal traffic based on IP address. The view level also lets you set Google Analytics goals. By clicking Admin, Google Analytics lets you set user permissions for managing users, edit, collaborate, or read and analyze. Managing users lets users add or remove user access to the account, property, or view. Edit lets users make changes to the configuration settings. Collaborate allows users to share things like dashboards or certain measurement settings. And finally, Read and Analyze lets users view data, analyze reports, and create dashboards, but restricts them from making changes to the settings or adding new users. When you open up the full report, you'll see links underneath the segment picker that control the different types of data in the report. The summary view is a summary of the dimension categorized by acquisition, behavior, and conversion metrics. This makes it easier to interpret these metrics in the context of the marketing funnel we discussed in Unit 1. Site usage shows behavior metrics like users, pages per session, and average session duration. Goals will show metrics based on the number of goals you've configured and will only show up if you've set up goals in Google Analytics, which we'll discuss later. And e-commerce will show you transaction metrics if you've set up e-commerce tracking and analytics. Now, let's switch back to the summary view. Below the graph is the main data table. You can see that the first column shows the current dimension, country, which was the last demographic category we selected in the overview report. You can switch between other dimensions like city, continent, and subcontinent by clicking the links above the data table. It's important to know you can also add another dimension to the table for even more specific analysis. We call this a secondary dimension, which is a common technique when analyzing data. For example, you could add a secondary dimension of device category to the location report to see what kind of devices were used by people in different countries while visiting your website. Here you can see that each row of the table represents a different segment of the traffic in the country dimension. Note that analytics is only showing you the first 10 rows of data and only as many columns as will fit on the screen. It will also be useful to filter the data table to focus only on the segments of traffic that are significant. Use the filter field at the top of the table to include only rows where the primary dimension contains your filter term. For example, you may want to look at data for a specific country, like India. So rather than scroll through the table, you could simply type India into the filter field and analytics will show you only data for segments that include the term India. Next to the advanced link, there are several different visualization options. The data table view is the default visualization for most reports. This organizes your data in a table broken out by acquisition, behavior, and conversion metrics for the audience and acquisition reports. The pie chart icon creates a pie chart based on your data. This helps you compare the percentages of a whole, such as how many users are on desktops, tablets, and mobile phones. You can choose which metric from your report should display in the pie chart using the pull-down menu. The performance view shows a bar graph of your data. This helps you compare individual segments side by side, like which countries bring in the highest traffic. You can also use the pull-down menu to select various metrics to be represented as bars. The comparison view shows you a bar graph to quickly see whether each entry in the table is performing above 
or below the site average for the selected metric. If the value for a given row is better than average, it appears green. If it's below average, it appears red. Again, you can use the drop-down menu to select which metric should be displayed. Finally, the pivot view creates a pivot table in which both rows and columns can show different dimension values for a comparison. For example, a pivot table could show the Google Store, the bounce rate, and number of sessions for each landing page and device type. Click Customization, then Dashboard in the left-hand navigation to view the reports that you've collected. To create a new dashboard, click Create, select a blank or a starter dashboard, and give your dashboard a name. You can add widgets to a dashboard by clicking Add Widget. This will let you name the widget that you want to appear on the dashboard and select a visualization type. You can choose to view the data as a number, a timeline, a map, a table, a pie chart, or a bar graph. You can select some of these visualizations for standard or real-time metrics. Use the Add a Metric pull-down menu below to search and add the particular metric you want to include. You can even add filters to the report widget once you've brought it into the dashboard, similar to the way we set filters at the view level earlier. Once you've created a dashboard, you can format it by clicking Customize Dashboard and selecting a layout. You can also drag and drop existing widgets to different locations within the dashboard. Mousing over a widget will reveal an edit icon that you can use to edit the data coming into the report widget. It also reveals a delete icon that allows you to remove the widget from the dashboard. There are two types of dashboards, private and shared. A private dashboard is only visible to you within that view. A shared dashboard can be seen by anyone who has access to that view. You can have 20 private dashboards per user and 50 shared dashboards per view. If you share the dashboard with other users, they can change what shows up in their dashboard, but their changes will only be visible to them. Your original dashboard cannot be changed by another user. If you want to share a dashboard, simply click Share at the top. Share a template link will provide a link to your dashboard template that can be added to any other view. But don't worry, this won't include any of your analytics data. If you wish to share your template more broadly, you can add the dashboard template to the Google Analytics Solutions Gallery by clicking Share in Solutions Gallery. The Solutions Gallery is a place where Google Analytics users can share different types of customizations, like dashboards. It's also a great place to find dashboard templates that you can import and then customize for your own business. You can also save reports in order to view them later by clicking Save at the top of most reports. When you save reports, they include any customizations you've made to the report. For example, if you filtered the data table, then that filter will automatically be applied when you access the report from the customization area under Saved Reports. Let's begin with the active users report. This can show you how many users had at least one session on your site in the last day, seven days, 14 days, and 30 days. We call this site reach or stickiness. If your marketing activities and site content encourage users to visit and return to your site, the active users in each time frame should grow. Next, let's look at the demographics and interest reports. The demographics report provides information about the age and gender of your users. The interest reports show your users' preferences for certain types of web content, like technology, music, travel, or TV. This information is useful in two ways. First, if you know your target audience, it can help verify that you're reaching the right people. Second, it can help guide decisions about your marketing and content strategy. Note that to see data in these reports, you must first enable advertising features in the demographics and interest reports for each property. Go into the Admin tab under Property and select Property Settings. Under Advertising Features, set Enable Demographics and Interest Reports to On. Once activated, you will see data in your demographics and interest reports about the age, gender, and interests of your users. 
Note that if you've just enabled this feature, it may take a day or two for the data to appear in these reports. Also, the demographic reports may not contain any data if your site traffic is very low or your segment is too small. The location report under Geo is one of the most useful audience reports. Google Analytics can anonymously determine a user's continent, subcontinent, country, and city through the IP address used by their browser. Notice the geographic heat map at the top of the report, which you can adjust to display different metrics. For example, switching the map to show percent of new sessions lets you identify potential new markets based on new user traffic to your website. This can help you decide whether to build awareness or invest in customer loyalty in particular locations. You could also use the table below the visualization to identify areas that have a high number of conversions or transactions, but low traffic rates. That can indicate untapped markets to target with advertising. Another analysis technique is to identify the regions where you already have a large audience, but lower than average performance. For example, if certain regions have a higher than average bounce rate or users that leave after viewing a single page, you might need to optimize your advertising or website. Perhaps you need to translate your ad or site into a local language or add geographically specific content. Below Geo are a set of behavior reports that help you understand how often users visited and returned to your website. The new versus returning report breaks out acquisition, behavior, and conversion goal metrics for new and returning users. You can look at this comparison over time to see how audience loyalty may be shifting. Consider your website objectives, as well as your marketing activities when evaluating the mix of new and returning users to your site. Underneath behavior reports, the technology and mobile reports can help you understand what technologies your audience uses to consume your site content. These reports can help you fine tune your site to make sure it's fully functional on different devices and browsers. For example, you can use the Browser and Operating Systems report to quickly identify issues with certain browsers on your site. If your site has a comparatively high bounce rate on a mobile browser, you may need to create a mobile-optimized version of your website with streamlined content and a simpler navigation. It's also a good idea to understand if users are migrating from desktop to mobile and plan your development accordingly. You can use the overview report under mobile to see a breakdown of your traffic based on smartphones, tablets, and desktop devices. Check this report to see how quickly mobile usage of your site has grown over time. The devices report lets you see additional details about the devices used to browse your site. This includes the mobile device name, brand, service provider, input selector, operating system, and other dimensions like screen resolution. These reports can give your developers and designers direction on how to create a mobile optimized experience to best suit your users. You can use the acquisition reports to compare the performance of different marketing channels and discover which sources send you the highest quality traffic and conversions. This can help you make better decisions about where to focus your marketing efforts. Before we discuss acquisition reports, it can be helpful to know how Google Analytics identifies traffic sources for your website. When a user lands on your site, the Google Analytics tracking code automatically captures several attributes, or dimensions, about where the user came from. This includes the traffic medium, source, and marketing campaign name. You can think of the medium as the mechanism that delivered users to your site. Some common examples of mediums are organic, CPC, referral, email, and none. Let's look at these different types of mediums. Organic is used to identify traffic that arrived on your site through unpaid search, like a non-paid Google search result. CPC indicates traffic that arrived through a paid search campaign, like Google AdWords text ads. Referral is used for traffic that arrived on your site after the user clicked on a website other than a search engine. Email represents traffic that came from an email marketing campaign. And none is applied for users that come directly to your site by typing your URL directly into a browser. In your reports, you will see these users as having a source of direct with a medium of none. Source provides more information about the medium. 
For example, if the medium is referral, then the source will be the URL of the website that referred the user to the site. If the medium is organic, then the source will be the name of the search engine, such as Google. Under All Traffic, let's look at the Source Medium Report in the Google Store Analytics account using the dates August 1, 2015 through August 31, 2015. This shows the sources and the respective mediums sending referrals, search engine traffic, and direct traffic to the site. Notice that the default sort is Users. To identify effective traffic sources, we can look at the source medium combinations with the most users. But that doesn't necessarily mean this was the best traffic. Ideally, traffic should be high quality, meaning that users who arrive from a source engage with the website or complete a conversion. A good indicator of traffic quality can be bounce rate. We can click into the comparison view and select the metric bounce rate to compare bounce rate for each source medium combination to the site average. Sure enough, we can see that our YouTube traffic is bouncing at a much higher rate than the site average. The Google Store may want to investigate to make sure that YouTube traffic is landing on a page that's valuable to those users. If we want to see only the organic sources sending traffic to the site, we could type organic into the filter. You can see that Google referred more traffic than any other non-paid source and had a relatively low bounce rate compared to the other sources. This means that users arriving from Google organic search are landing on highly relevant pages. Now let's compare the performance for all of our various Google marketing activities that generated traffic by changing the filter to Google. We can now see that organic traffic was our biggest traffic source, followed by Google CPC, which represents paid search traffic using Google AdWords. This is a great way to add context to your analysis and understand which marketing activities are generating success for your business. There are other ways to view which traffic sources bring the most engaged users to the site. Using the channels report, we could view traffic by channel which bundles the sources together under each medium. Traffic sources are automatically grouped into basic categories, or channels, like organic, social, direct, referral, display, etc. Clicking into each channel will break out the individual sources for that channel. If you want to group your sources differently, you can create your own channel groupings in Google Analytics. We'll cover this more in an advanced course. If you want to view your traffic organized by which sites have linked to yours, you can look at the referrals report. You can even click into individual referrals to see which specific web pages link back to your site. If you want to understand which specific pages of your site are being linked to, you can add a secondary dimension of landing page to the report. This will show you which external sites are sending traffic to each of your specific pages and potentially offer you a source of new advertising partnerships with those referring websites. The total page views metric is simply the sum of each time a user loaded a page on your website. Let's begin by looking at the All Pages report, located under Site Content, and scroll down to the data table. The page views metric shows how frequently each page on your site was viewed. By default, this report will show data by the page URI. The URI is the part of the URL after the domain name in the location bar of the browser. If you switch the primary dimension of the report to page title, you can view this report by the title listed on the web page's HTML. Other metrics in the All Pages report, like average time on page and bounce rate, indicate how engaged users were on each page of your site. You can sort the report by these metrics to quickly find low-performing pages that need improvement or high-performing content to guide future content decisions. The Content Drill-Down Report under Site Content groups pages according to your website's directory structure. You can click on a directory to see the pages of your site within that directory. This is especially useful if you're trying to understand the performance of content in a particular section of your website. If you switch to the pie chart view, you can quickly see which sections of your site are most popular with your users. The landing pages report under site content 
list the pages of your website where users first arrived. These are the first pages viewed in a session. You can use this report to monitor the number of bounces and the bounce rate for each landing page. A high bounce rate usually indicates that the landing page content is not relevant or engaging to those users. The Exit Pages report, under Site Content, shows the pages where users left your site. Because you don't want users exiting from important pages like a shopping cart checkout, it's a good idea to periodically review this report to minimize unwanted exits. The Events report tracks how users interact with specific elements on your website. For example, you can use this report to track when users click on a video player or a download link. Event tracking requires additional implementation beyond the analytics tracking code snippet, which we'll discuss in more detail in an advanced Google Analytics course. Marketing campaigns can take several forms. Your business may want to advertise using text ads on search engine results, banner ads placed on strategic publisher websites, or you may have social media or email campaigns that communicate your brand and products to customers. It's common to use a combination of these marketing activities to drive sales and website conversions. Marketing campaigns are tracked in Google Analytics through campaign tagging. Campaign tags are extra bits of information that you add to the URL links of your online marketing or advertising materials. These include tracking parameters followed by an equal sign and a single word or hyphenated words that you designate. When users click on a link with an added parameter, the Google Analytics tracking code will extract the information from the link and associate that user and their behavior with your marketing campaign. That way, you can know which people came to your site through your various marketing activities. For example, the Google Store has a monthly email newsletter it sends to its customers with links back to the Google Store website. Adding a campaign tag of email to these links allows the store to easily identify the users that came to the website from the email newsletter. There are five different campaign tags that help you identify specific information about your campaign traffic. Medium, source, and campaign are required campaign tags. You can also add tags for content and term. Medium communicates the mechanism or how you sent your message to the user. You could include email for an email campaign, CPC for paid search ads, or social for a social network. Source communicates where the user came from. This could be a specific web page or a link in an email. Source could also differentiate the type of medium. So if the medium was CPC, or cost per click paid traffic, the source might be Google, Bing, or Yahoo. If the medium was email, the source might be newsletter. Campaign can communicate the name of your marketing campaign, such as 2015 back to school or 2015 holiday sale. Content can be used to differentiate versions of a promotion. This is useful when you want to test which version of an ad or promotion is more effective. If you're running a test between two different versions of a newsletter, you might want to label these tags V1 $10 off and V2 no promo to help differentiate which newsletter the data is associated with in Google Analytics. Term is used to identify the keywords for paid search campaigns. You would only use this field if you are manually tagging a paid search campaign like Bing or Yahoo. We'll talk about the best way to track Google AdWords in a later lesson. To add these parameters into the URLs associated with your ads, Google Analytics provides a tool called URL Builder. Navigate to the URL Builder in the Help Center, click the link at the end of this lesson, and scroll down to the URL Builder form. In the first step, type in the URL of the landing page or where you want your ad or campaign link to take users. Then, fill out fields for the campaign source and campaign medium. Optionally, you can fill out the fields for campaign term and campaign content. You'll also need to fill out the campaign name. Term, content, and name can be any values you want. Just make sure that they're descriptive enough to recognize when they appear in your Google Analytics reports. 
A quick note about naming conventions. Typically, you'll use single words to name your tags. If you use phrases, then the URL builder will add underscores between the words to avoid spaces in the URL. Be sure to use consistent spelling and capitalization when entering tag values. Since Google Analytics is case sensitive, a campaign named Promo1 in all uppercase will show up separately from a campaign named Promo1 in all lowercase. Also, make sure that you use consistent medium names like display for banner ads and email for email campaigns. When you click Generate URL at the bottom, you can see that the URL builder generates the link with all the correct campaign parameters attached. This provides an easy way to quickly generate campaign tags for tracking. But keep in mind, you can only use it to build out one URL at a time, so you probably won't want to use it to build each URL if you have a large campaign. Instead, you can use a spreadsheet to simplify the process. We've provided an example template at the end of this lesson that you can use to manage your campaign values for bulk URL building. Before launching a campaign with this link, you'll want to verify that your tracking tags are working correctly. Sometimes a website configuration can break Google Analytics campaign tracking. Here's a simple way to test your campaign before you launch it. Open an incognito window or private browsing session. Then copy and paste the link you created to track your campaign into the address bar of the browser. Once your website loads, navigate around your site and complete some of the critical actions. For example, if one of your website objectives is a trial signup, complete the signup process on your site. Or if your campaign contains a coupon, try submitting a transaction with the coupon applied. It's a good idea to try this with each URL you created. You can instantly see campaign information in the real-time reports, or wait a few hours to review the data in your standard campaign reports. Then visit the All Campaigns report in the Acquisition section under Campaigns. This report lets you compare incoming traffic from your various marketing campaigns. To verify that the campaign is collecting data properly, type the name of the campaign into the filter. You should see an overview of the campaign clicks that you tested. If you click on the campaign name, you can see the source and medium data that you entered into the URL builder. If you want to verify the other campaign tags you added to your URL, add a secondary dimension, such as ad content. This lets you view the primary dimension of source medium broken down by the content tag you added to your links. The Google Store differentiated the content tag for their email newsletters by whether they were offering promotions or not. By adding the secondary dimension of ad content, we can see which promotions were most effective at driving people to the website. There are many other ways to analyze campaign data, which we'll cover in an advanced course. Using the URL builder in conjunction with Google Analytics reporting, you can quickly understand which campaigns drove the highest quality traffic to your site. Between two types of goals, business goals and Google Analytics goals. Business goals are actions you want your users to take on your website. Each time a user completes one of your business goals, we call this a conversion. This could be signing up for a newsletter or buying a product. But in Google Analytics, you can use a feature called Goals to track these conversions. Once you configure goals, Analytics will create conversion-related metrics, like the total number of conversions, as well as the percentage of users that converted. We refer to this as the conversion rate. When you set up a goal in Google Analytics, you can also set up a goal funnel. This is a data visualization of the different steps needed to complete that goal. This visual helps you identify where users are dropping out of the conversion process. You must be an administrator on the view in which you want to enable goals in analytics. Also note that you can only set up 20 goals per view. So be thoughtful about the goals which are most important to your business. First, you'll need to decide what you want to track based on your business goals. Since the Google Store is an e-commerce store, one goal they could track is successful checkouts. 
So let's set up a goal every time a user reaches the checkout confirmation page. We'll also set up a funnel visualization so we can see if users are dropping off on their way to the confirmation page. Note that this goal won't track actual revenue. It will simply track how far users get at each stage of the goal and where they might abandon the process. Creating a funnel visualization to track goal completions is completely optional, but it can add a lot of visibility into each step of the conversion flow. To get started, we'll go into the admin section. Then, under Views, click Goals. Then we'll click New Goal. Note that your goal setup may look a little different than the one for the Google Store, depending on your business type. Analytics provides you with some preset business goal templates. Since we want to track whether users made it to the checkout page for the Google Store, we'll choose Buy Merchandise and click Continue. Because we want to track checkout confirmations, we'll name the goal Checkout Complete. Each goal uses a particular goal slot ID that are numbered from 1 to 20. The goal slot ID is a simple way to organize your goals. The default slot will always be the next slot available. If you're creating your first goal, the goal slot ID will be 1, but you can choose a different slot if you have certain goals that you wish to group together. Next, we'll choose one of our four goal types. Each of these types is triggered by a particular user action. Destination is when a user reaches a specific page on your site, such as a thank you page. Duration is based on the length of a user's session. Pages or screens is based on how many pages a user views in a session. And events is for tracking specific actions on a site. We'll cover events more broadly in an advanced course. Note that if you want to create a funnel visualization, you can only use the destination type goal. So we'll select destination and click continue. Next, we'll enter the destination URL of the order complete page in the destination field. The destination URL is the URL of the page that is shown when the user converts or completes the conversion process. Rather than enter the entire URL, we want to look for something that's distinctive in that URL that will allow us to track our goal using only this page. Since none of the other web pages in the Google Store have submit order in the URL, we'll use this to identify our order complete page. You'll notice that if we select equals to, type forward slash submit order, and click verify at the bottom, we don't see any conversion data for this goal. This is because the submit order page is part of a longer dynamic URL. In order to track this goal, we'll actually need to use what's called a regular expression and enter the value forward slash submit order to indicate that the URL preceding it can be variable. Now, if we click re-verify, we can see that the conversion rate is above zero, which means we'll be able to track data. We'll cover regular expressions more in an advanced analytics course. If you want to assign a monetary amount to the conversion goal, you can flip the value toggle to on and type in the amount that each conversion is worth. You would only use this if each conversion was worth a consistent amount for your business. For example, if each newsletter signup was worth $1 to your business, you could set a goal value equal to one. Since we're tracking Google Store order completions and each order is a different amount, we'll leave this value set to off for now. If we wanted to track actual revenue made from purchases, we would need to turn on e-commerce tracking, which we discuss in our e-commerce analytics course. Once you've verified your settings, flip the funnel switch to on to add the funnel steps. Each funnel step represents an action on your website that needs to be taken in order to accomplish this goal. In this case, we'll need to include a unique part of the URL for each page the user has to view in order to check out and make a purchase. We can name each step in our funnel and add the unique part of the URL. If a step is required to complete the goal, move the required toggle to yes. For example, if we only wanted users who entered the funnel on the first step to show up in our funnel visualization report, we could set the first step to required. Note that the goal completion numbers in the conversions report will not be affected by the funnel you've set up, even if you've made some of the steps required, as these steps are only reported in the funnel visualization report. Once you click save, 
you'll see the goal appear in the goals list. To see your goal metrics, navigate back into the reporting view and under the conversions reports, click goals and then overview. More importantly, you can now view goal data in almost all of your other Google Analytics reports, like the audience and acquisition reports. To see the related funnel visualization, under conversions, click the funnel visualization report. Scrolling down, you can see user activity in each step of the funnel and how many users proceeded through each step. If you see users dropping off dramatically at a particular step, you may want to investigate further. There could be technical issues with this stage of the funnel, preventing users from proceeding. In addition to creating your own custom goals, the Analytics Solutions Gallery offers many goals built by other users that you can add to your Analytics account to use for your own business purposes. When you link your Google Analytics account to your Google AdWords account, you can view AdWords click and cost data alongside your site engagement data in Google Analytics. Create remarketing lists in Analytics to use in AdWords campaigns. Import Analytics goals and transactions into AdWords as conversions. And view Analytics site engagement data in AdWords. To set up an AdWords account, navigate to the link at the end of this lesson and follow the instructions to create an account. It should take less than 20 minutes. To link Google Analytics with AdWords, first Make sure you are logged into Analytics using the same email as your AdWords account. You can find the email you're signed in with in the upper right hand corner. Note that you must be an administrator on both accounts. Next, click the Admin tab. Then, make sure you've selected the account and the property you wish to link to your AdWords account. Under the Property section, select AdWords Linking. Any AdWords accounts you have linked to your Google account will automatically appear. Check which account you wish to link and click Continue. Next, type in a link group title. This could be your AdWords account ID. Now, select the view in which you want the AdWords data to appear and select Link Accounts. The linked account will show in your link group list with the title you entered. When you link your Google Analytics and AdWords accounts, campaign data is shared between the two systems, but it still requires campaign tracking. Although you can manually add campaign tracking tags to AdWords URLs using the URL builder as we did earlier, there's a better option. AdWords can automatically add a special campaign tag to your AdWords URLs through a feature called auto-tagging. Auto-tagging is required to get specific AdWords dimensions into Google Analytics. Once we have linked AdWords with Analytics, we can find AdWords reports under the Acquisition section in the left-hand navigation. If we click on the Campaigns report, we can see how well our various AdWords campaigns are performing. Notice that this report organizes AdWords campaigns using the same names assigned in AdWords. This is one of the benefits of linking AdWords with Analytics. Note, at the top of the report, you can switch between desktop, mobile, and tablet metrics to view the performance of campaigns across different devices. In the data table below, you can use the acquisition metrics to see how the clicks for each campaign and the total amount paid for those clicks. CPC shows the average cost for each click. Under Behavior, you can see user engagement for each campaign. And under Conversions, you can see the conversion rate, the number of actual goal completions, and how much these conversions were ultimately worth to your business for each AdWords campaign. You can use the pull-down menu under Conversions to show data for each of your goals. Now, let's look at the Keywords report. This can help you understand how well keywords and individual ads are performing. For example, if a keyword is bringing in a lot of traffic but has a high bounce rate, it might indicate a disconnect between the ad and landing page content. If you have a keyword with a high conversion rate but low number of impressions or number of times an ad was shown, you may want to raise your bid for that keyword so the ad is shown more often and reaches a larger audience. You could also add device category as a secondary dimension 
to break out these keywords by the kinds of devices that users were on when they clicked your ad and visited your site. Finally, let's look at the Bid Adjustments report. Bid Adjustments are an AdWords feature used to automatically adjust keyword bids based on a user's device, location, or time of day. For example, if the Google Store opens a temporary location during the holidays to sell merchandise, they may want to add a bid adjustment to increase ad visibility on mobile devices within three miles of the store during the hours of operation. The bid adjustment report in Analytics lets you analyze AdWords performance for the bid adjustments you've set for your campaigns. You can use the selector at the top of the table to evaluate campaign performance by the device, location, time of day, and remarketing list bid adjustments. We'll cover remarketing in an advanced course. To see all of your bid adjustments and metrics for a specific campaign, you can click on that campaign name in the list. If you want to see the top performing pages for new users, under Behavior, go to Site Content and click on the All Pages report. Then, add a secondary dimension of user type so you can see which of your top pages are being visited by new users. This can help inform your site content and marketing campaign strategy to acquire even more users. If you want to identify ineffective landing pages, go to the Behavior Reports under Site Content and open the Landing Pages report. Sort by bounce rate to see which pages are responsible for people leaving without engaging with your site. If you're running campaigns and want to correlate these landing pages with your marketing efforts, add a secondary dimension of campaign or source medium. Then you can examine which campaigns and landing pages are turning away users and make corrections. Also, it's important to understand how users on different devices respond to your digital marketing campaigns. To view user campaign data across devices, go into the Acquisition Reports and choose Campaigns, and then All Campaigns. Then add a secondary dimension of Device Category to the report. Now it's easy to see what happens to users on different devices as they respond to your digital marketing campaigns. There's also the potential to optimize your digital campaigns using geographical data and goals. Navigate to the Location Report in the Geo section of Google Analytics. Then, under the Conversions pull-down menu to the right, select a goal that you're interested in and sort by Goal Conversion Rate. This will help you see which cities or countries had the highest conversions and help you target those locations accordingly.